Hello guys, this is Oroth and a warm welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm gonna highlight a very powerful open world setup that can be used for any class no matter your resonance. So let's dive straight into it. In the timeline of today's video we're first gonna look at the legendary gems, then we're gonna look at the set pieces, we're gonna look at the paragon trees, we're going to look at the warband room. We're going to look at different skill types. And lastly, we're also going to look at which attributes to look for. I have divided the legendary gems into three different categories. The first category is damage over time gems. The second category is damage over time activators. And the third category is an optional category which includes gems that you don't have to use for this setup, but they can be useful. So let's first look at the legendary gems in the dots category. And there we have three different gems. We have Everlasting Torment, we have Viper's Bite, and we have Seeping Bile. It's very important to use Viper's Bite for this setup because it has 100% chance to increase the poison effect whenever you apply damage to a target. But on top of that, we can also add some extra juice by implementing Everlasting Torment and Seeping Bile. In the second category, we have the Dot Activators. And here we actually have a couple of gems that are often overlooked. And here we can see Volatility Shard, Igneous Scorn and Void Spark. And the purpose of these gems is that we want to have an efficient way to apply damage to uh, all the monsters in a pack when we are farming. Because maybe there are skills that we are using, perhaps the primary attack sometimes, even though I recommend you to not utilize the primary attack that often in open world farming because we lose a lot of speed. But it's a great example. If I use the primary attack, it's often single target. And I will do damage to one target and I will apply a lot of dot effects from the first category. But it will take a lot of time to kill off the pack because when I'm done with one target, I have to move on to the next. So the whole point of this setup is that we want to do one hit on any of the targets in a pack and then we want different events to happen that enables and triggers dot effects on all the targets. And that's where we have the dot activators. And if we look on volatility shard, it causes an explosion whenever an enemy dies. And this effect can occur every six seconds, which is what we also want. We want a short uh, cooldown on this effect. On Igneous Scorn, we have a similar effect. It also causes an explosion, but it happens whenever we do a critical hit. So this is also a dot activator. And finally, we have Void Spark, which releases like a chain lightning effect. So if you are hitting one target, there will be a chain lightning effect that applies to multiple enemies. And whenever one of these effects triggers, we will do at least some damage to each target in that specific pack, which will in turn apply the dot effects, meaning we can from one hit on any of the targets kill off the whole pack. And we don't have to stay around for a long time, we can just keep on moving uh, constantly, which is the key to being efficient in open world farming. In the third and final category, we have some optional gems. And here I chose to include Berserker's Eye, Blessed Pebble, and Pain Clasp. Berserker's Eye and Pain Clasp is included because it can be wise for some players to up their damage just a little bit to increase the strength of this setup further. And Blessed Pebble is good because it prolongs beneficial effects. So if we take the Void Spark effect, for example, it will increase the duration of this effect. 
A lot of open world farm builds also utilizes certain skills that works as buffs that uh, follows with you to perhaps uh, do AoE damage. One example of such a skill is Siphon Blood, uh, when you pair it with a certain helmet for Blood Knight. And then it's very important to prolong the beneficial effect duration as long as possible for this effect to be active uh, all the time. So to conclude this segment about the legendary gems, it's very important to understand when it comes to damage over time effects that the first tick of damage happens instantly. So if I apply, let's say, the Viper's Bite effect to an enemy, it will do a tick of damage every second. But I don't have to wait a whole second for the first tick to happen. So the key with this setup is that I have a lot of dot effects and I also have a lot of activators that helps me to apply them to a whole pack. So even if I just manage to hit one of the targets within a pack, the dot effects will spread fast to all of the targets. And since the first tick is instant, most of the time the whole pack dies immediately. And even if it doesn't die immediately, it doesn't matter because then they will die from the second tick or the third tick. And the important note here is that as long as I manage to hit one of the targets in a certain pack, I can keep on moving on to the next pack. I don't have to stay around to kill them off manually because yeah, the legendary gems will take care of that for me. What is also very good about this setup is that you don't need to have the gems at max rank for it to work properly. It's enough if you get the two star gems to rank five and when it comes to the five star gems you can just put in an auxiliary version, a rank one gem into one of your other five star gems if you don't have any of them. Let's take the Void Spark for example. You don't need it to be high rank even if it's rank 1, it will still be just as good as a dot activator. This means that it doesn't matter what your resonance is. If you're using this setup for open world farming, you will be able to kill off the packs just as fast as anyone who is two times or three times stronger than you. So let's talk briefly about which sets that are very strong for open world farming. In all of my builds, I always use at least two pieces of Isatar and two pieces of Vitus Urge. Two pieces of Isatar, of course, because movement speed and mobility is very important. And two pieces of Vitus Urge because I want to prolong all of the beneficial effects, such as Void Spark, as we talked about, but also these AoE skills that follows with you. If you use two or four pieces of these sets, it doesn't really matter, but at least include two pieces. In my opinion, there are two different paragon trees that are very useful for open world farming. The first one is Treasure Hunter, which will increase the amount of gold that monsters drop. And it will also increase the drop rate from elite monsters. And elite monsters include blue mobs, yellow mobs, and red mobs. But my personal favorite is the Warden Paragon Tree. And what's so good about the Warden Paragon Tree is that it increases our size by 5%, and it also lets us move unhindered through enemies. So without the Warden, you can't run through an enemy pack before you kill it because you will often get stuck on any of the targets. But with the Warden Paragon, you will never be slowed down and can just run straight through the pack. On top of the Paragon tree, you should also use the Protector Room from your Warband. Because in the Protector Room, you can have a remnant that increases your size by 15%. And no matter what they tell you, size actually matters. Because it works like this. Let's say that your base movement speed when you're at normal size is 100. If you manage to increase your size by 20%, 
you will also increase your base movement speed by 20%. So if we have both warden and the protector warband room active at the same time, we will be 20% bigger in size, which will increase our base speed from 100 to 120. Any type of movement speed that we then get will be calculated on the higher value. So let's say that you get 30% increased movement speed from Isatar. When you are at normal size, this will increase your speed by 30. Because 30% 30 of 100 is 30. 100 plus 30 equals 130. But if your base movement speed is 120, your new uh, speed will be 120 plus 30 percent of 120, which is uh, 36. So we will have a speed of 156. So now we have gone through the whole core open world setup for this video. But before we leave, we will also talk a little bit about which types of skills you can use and which attributes you should look for in your set items. And when it comes to the skills, first of all, we want to have skills with low cooldown. We want them to have a very low cost time and uh, preferably no animation whatsoever when we use it. Because if there is any type of cost time or animation, that will slow us down. We also want to have AOE skills as much as possible because the goal is to inflict any type of damage to all the mobs as fast as possible. If you also have any ranged skills which inflicts AOE damage, uh, that's preferable because then we don't have to move close to a pack and we can kill it from afar, enabling us to take a shorter route. On top of this, we also want to look for good dash skills. And uh, there are many examples of dash skills you can use. One example is the teleport as a wizard or as a necromancer. You can also use the leap skill as a barbarian. Or if you are a blood knight, there are certain versions of spear flurry or whirling strike that gives you excellent dash capabilities. So, like I said, there is many different uh, options you can use, but these are the things you should look for. And lastly, what also matters is the magical attributes of your set items. In open world farming, dealing a lot of damage is often not the issue. Uh, so what we want is that we, the optimal thing would be to reduce our cooldowns as much as possible. So I would either look for movement speed on your set pieces or scale cooldown. And if you can find both on one piece, that's optimal. This you can find on your necklace, on your rings and on your gloves. And of course, you also have the feet and the waist where you should only look for beneficial effect duration. The bracelets, they don't really give any magical attributes that are useful for open world farming. This is basically the whole concept of this core setup and I hope you find it uh, very efficient if you try it out. And uh, before we leave, I would like to thank you for watching and I want to wish you a good day or a good evening wherever you are. And to all my clan members, in Kuro, I would of course like to say Abrath El Omno Kuro. Bye bye.